Your next guest says he is still finding some value in certain parts of the market and maybe one chip name. Joining us now is David Bonson. He is chief investment officer of the aptly named Bonson Group. David, good to have you on The Exchange. I am Brian. I am not Kelly. Uh, Texas Instruments. It does not get a lot of love. It's been around forever, just kind of sits there outside of Dallas and does its thing. Why are you interested in this name? That's the exact reason why we go. love names that are not uh, fully understood, that people are not paying attention to. It has a market level beta. It isn't way above market beta like most of these names might be. It's trading at 22 times earnings, not 60 times earnings. And it's uh, most importantly a big dividend grower. That's what we do. Uh, we run over $5 billion in dividend growth is our key strategy. Texas Instruments is a heck of a dividend grower. And why are they able to do that? They can continue to grow their free cash flow is just a more attractive way to play some of that space. Yeah, is there something specific about it? Is their business mix, David? Is it their valuation that's to your point? Is it kind of the fact that, uh, as we both alluded to, they don't get a lot of attention or maybe D all the above? It is D all the above. And I also think, too, the fact that it came back a little bit last year. It came in at, when we entered the name. It had come down about $20 a share. So we liked the fact that we had a more attractive entry point. But again, you have a 3.3% dividend yield in a space that has largely ignored dividends. And they're growing that dividend at 8% per year. And I think on a valuation basis, it's a, a wonderful way to play the sector. I saw... David Simon, who does not do a lot of interviews at all, the founder and CEO of Simon Property Group, on with Jim and Mad Money the other night. A fascinating interview, in part because despite all the talk about retail's woes, Simon Property Group is like 96 percent full. They tend to have very high end malls. And now, of course, they've got this international expansion. Simon, even with all the, the concern about retail and commercial real estate, David, is a name that you like. Yeah, we've owned it for years. And so this uh, Texas Instruments is a newer name. Simon Property have owned a long time. They're 96.4% occupied, to be precise. And new leases are averaging 7% rent growth over prior year. They are a phenomenally run company. They do own higher end malls, higher quality. And where there has been trouble, they have over and over again been able to create economic value by repurposing some of the brick and mortar, some of the real estate. They own great assets. I just think Simon Property was largely misunderstood. Here you're talking about now a 5.5% yield, but we're getting over 20% per year, cash on cash, from when we first entered the name because of their ongoing dividend growth. And they are basically a balance sheet play. They have a wonderful balance sheet of assets with debt that is under 50% of a ratio. Wow. Yeah, just truly, it feels like SPG has just done something that, that a lot of others certainly have not been able to do. Do you have a macro view on the markets? We're sitting at over 5,000. We're at record highs. You heard Dom Chu walk through all the numbers. Nobody seems to care about valuations. It's just about, you know, buy at the highs and keep riding it. Do you think this momentum can continue, David? Well, the answer is yes, it can. And that I also believe no, it won't. And so uh, we don't really uh, believe that people should ignore valuation. And I grew up as a professional investor in the 90s, and we learned what happened out of big tech. The amount of similarities from that dot-com moment right now are frightening to me. 72% of companies in the S&P last year underperformed the yep. S&P, highest in history. You have a couple of names in the Magnificent Seven that their market cap is bigger than all of Japan and Britain and Canada put together. OK, I, I some of these names are phenomenal. They're better cash flowers than those names in the late 90s were. But at the end of the day, it's a valuation story. But you say, can it continue? Sure. I'm not timing this. I'm not telling people next month these things are coming down. But I don't want to buy NVIDIA at 70 times earnings. I don't want to buy Amazon at 55 times earnings when I think there are other value-oriented names that can do better. And for as good as 2023 was for the index and for big tech, mag7, et cetera, they're basically broken even over two years. You have one really bad year, one really good year, and it's yeah. about flat. That, that is, that is, that is, is such is a not critical. Away. That is an amazing point you're making, David. Because I was, I just posted something about. I was bullish on Japan. Nobody cares what I think. Two years ago, it turned out to be not bad. And I look back and I was trying to compare the S and P to the, the Nikkei in Japan, and the S and P is only up four percent 
since December of 2021. I mean, it's been a heck of a run the last year and a half or year or so. But to your point, we fell. And we're, if you just bought the S&P 500 with inflation, you're actually flat to probably slightly negative. That's right. And the S&P wasn't even up at the end of 23 from its high of uh, late 21. It's only up a few percent now just because of the first month or so of this year. And and so that's fine. But I just think this is a historical pattern that you have a huge bull market, you have a correction, and then you have years of a flat market, a consolidation. That's generally a very good time to be in the dividend names, to be in more value oriented names. I'm not recommending people get out of the market altogether. There are positions, places to be. But there was a free ride for 12 years, Brian, for index investors with the Fed at ZERP, with QE, and with really kind of reflating the economy post-financial crisis. That bull market is totally over. Right now, what's the news story? Well, maybe AI is going to continue and 70 uh, times earnings we can grow into. But that's not going to be every name. There's going to be a lot of names that end up in a graveyard. And to me, I'd rather be more fundamentally oriented. A name like Simon Property is sort of removed from all this. It's, it's got a totally mm-hmm. different story. And we think it has repeatable cash flows that investors are going to like a great deal. SPG, TXN, and uh, a little bit of good uh, historical context and maybe kind of a warning about the market. David Bonson with the Bonson Group. We appreciate it, David. Have a great day and a good weekend. Thanks, Brian.